let's learn how to install and configure MySQL on a Ubuntu server. More specifically, I'm actually going to be installing MariaDB, which is a forked version of MySQL uh, that offers some improvements and benefits over the classic MySQL. Uh, if you want to learn about those improvements and benefits, I do have a article you can read that goes into more details. But long story short, my recommendation is if you're setting up a database, you're working with MySQL, I actually recommend uh, going straight to MariaDB. So that's what we're going to be covering. So jumping in, the first thing we want to do is run the MySQL command with the version flag just to check and make sure that it's not already installed on your server. Uh, it's possible your server was pre-configured with it from your server provider. So if that's the case, it might change how we go about things a little bit. So let's do that check first. So I'm just going to copy this command, switch over to command line. I'm already connected to my server. Let's run that. And in my case, you can see it says uh, command not found, indicating I have neither MySQL or MariaDB installed on the server. Uh, and if you're in the same situation, you're ready to proceed with the installation steps. And so coming back to the notes, you would want to skip down over the stuff that follows. I'm about to talk about this in a second, what to do if you already have a database system installed, uh, how to handle that. But if you don't, you can jump right down to installation and start with that. And I'll include a time code on the screen of where you can jump in the video to get to that part. Uh, but rewinding, for those of you who maybe it didn't report back on command not found, um, it indicates that you already have a database system installed for MySQL, um, and that'll either be MariaDB. You can see an example output if you did have MariaDB installed. You can see reference to MariaDB, version numbers, that sort of thing. Uh, or if you just had regular MySQL installed, you would see something similar with version information. You just wouldn't see any reference to MariaDB. All right, so what do you do if you already have one of these things installed? Well, in the case of if you already have MariaDB installed, uh, you can basically skip the steps I'm about to show in a moment of installation, and you can get right down to the section on starting the database service. And then following that, there will be some information about configuring it. Uh, if you already have MySQL installed, I'm going to recommend actually deleting it uh, and then installing MariaDB, uh, just because, as I mentioned at the top of the video, there are some benefits to MariaDB over regular MySQL. Now, that recommendation is just if this is a new server you're setting up. If this is an existing server and you have MySQL installed, and maybe you've even created databases, you've used that database service, you don't want to just delete it because you would be deleting those databases in the process. All right, so if you fall in that situation, I actually have a link to a separate guide I'll include in the description that talks about migrating from MySQL to MariaDB. I talk about how to bring your databases over so you're not losing any data. Um, so just keep that in mind. What I'm about to show about deleting MySQL, like I said, it's only if you're setting up new servers, you don't have existing data that you have to be worrying about. All right, so if that applies to you, new server, just want to get rid of MySQL and set yourself up to install MariaDB, uh, here are the steps you're going to want to do that. You're going to run through all four of these commands. I have them outlined in the notes and an explanation of what each command is doing. And that should get you to a blank slate. So if you were to run MySQL version again after doing those steps, you should see output similar to what I'm seeing here. All right, so at this point, uh, everybody should be working in a clean slate, so to speak, where you don't have MySQL installed, you don't have MariaDB yet installed, and so we're ready to install it. The first thing we're going to do to do that is we're going to run sudo apt update, uh, apt being our Linux-based package manager. Uh, by running apt update, we're just basically updating our server's list of packages that we can pull from. So I'll give this a moment to complete. All right, and that's done. So now to install MariaDB, we're going to say sudo apt install MariaDB server. Enter yes when it prompts you to do so. And it's as simple as that. It's now installed. So returning to the notes, our next step is to actually start the database service. We'll do that with this uh, system control command. And you'll notice with this command, I am referencing MySQL. And you'll see this in several of the commands I'm about to run. Even though we're working with MariaDB, we're still going to interface with it via that MySQL keyword. All right, so let's go ahead and start it. Uh, this won't produce any output. Uh, so if we want to check that it worked, uh, we can amend that command. Instead of start, we can say status. And it'll tell us information. So we can see uh, it is a MariaDB database server that's running, and it is currently active. And we can type the letter Q to exit the status and return to our regular prompt. So with the database service installed and running, 
the next thing we want to do is run a script called MySQL Secure Installation. That's just going to go through some security related configurations for our new setup. So let's run this. The first thing it's going to ask for is your root password. Uh, we're just going to leave this blank and hit enter. Then it's going to ask if we want to switch to Unix socket authentication. Uh, this is a plugin that uh, allows you to authenticate with your database server using the same uh, authentication system you're using on the server itself. In other words, if you're connected to your server as the root user, uh, it will then authenticate you to your database server as the root user. Uh, now, Unix socket authentication with the current versions of MariaDB is enabled by default when we installed MariaDB. So it's a little confusing here that it's asking, do you want to switch to it when you are already using Unix uh, socket authentication? Uh, so we're actually counterintuitively going to say no here, not because we don't want Unix socket authentication, but because we know it is already enabled by default. So I'll hit enter, and then the next prompt is asking if we want to change our root password. Uh, and again, because we're using Unix socket authentication, this is actually irrelevant. Uh, we're not going to be dealing with the MySQL root user password. We're always going to be authenticating via our server's root. So I'm just going to say no here as well and hit enter. And then the next prompt is telling you that when MariaDB was installed, it set it up with this anonymous user for testing purposes. Uh, do you want to remove it? And we're going to say yes. The next prompt is asking if we want to disallow root login remotely. Uh, this is going to make it so that we can only access our database as the root user if we are connected to the server. We can't do this remotely. Uh, and I do recommend uh, doing this, so I'm going to say yes here. The next prompt is about cleaning up a database called test that came with our install. And we're going to remove this as well, just like we re uh, removed the anonymous user. And then finally, it's asking us to reload our privileges table because uh, you can see in the previous step, it removed privileges on that test database. So we want to make sure those changes take effect. So I'm going to enter yes again. And we're done with that step. Uh, so what's next? Well, at this point, everything is set up and you would want to start using the database service. Uh, for example, one of the first things you'll probably want to do is actually create a database. Uh, and one way we can do that is via the MySQL command prompt. Uh, we're going to enter that with just the MySQL command. Uh, and to start with, we're going to connect as the root user. So I'm going to add the user flag and indicate I want to connect as the root user. And in my case, you can see that that just worked. It didn't ask for passwords or anything like that because that Unix socket plugin we were talking about, we saw that that was enabled. And because I am logged into the server as the root user, it allowed me to authenticate with the database as its root user. Now, if I wasn't connected as the root user, uh, this would have failed. Um, and just to show this, let me open a new tab and dial into the server as a different user. Uh, so I'm going to initiate a new SSH connection. This is going to connect as this regular user I have created on that server. All right, let's try that same command again. So it's going to be my SQL, and we're going to indicate we want to connect as the root user. Uh, but this time, it's going to fail. So in this situation, uh, what I need to do is actually execute my SQL with super user privileges to get that authentication. All right, so just to show that, we'll use the sudo command sudo mysql, and again, it's going to be the root user. Uh, it's going to ask me for my password for this account, so I'll enter that. All right, and there we are at the prompt. All right, so long story short, because of that Unix socket plugin, we just need to interact with mysql as a root user, whether we're logged in as the root user or we are um, operating our commands with those super user privileges. Now, as a footnote to this, this whole idea of interacting with MySQL as the root user, um, I just want to mention that uh, typically best practices when you're working with MySQL and you're creating different databases, you're going to be creating separate MySQL users that have access to those databases. Um, and you'll set up your applications to connect as those separate users. Um, and that's just good practice because that way if one MySQL user is compromised, uh, you're only potentially compromising the database they're connected to as opposed to the root user, which has access to all of the databases. Uh, but what I'm talking about here is specifically you operating as the administrator on your server where you're probably going to be connecting as the root user that has access to all of the databases. Uh, this is separate than application specific connections where, like I said, for security purposes, you want to, uh, want to have separate users. All right, that's a whole other can of worms and perhaps a topic for another guide. Um, but I did just want to put some of these things on your radar, especially if you are new to working with MySQL privileges, that sort of thing.
Uh, but that tangent aside, where are we at? We're at the MySQL prompt, and so we can start to run SQL commands to work with our database system. Uh, for example, one of the first things you'll probably want to do is create a database. So we can run the command uh, SQL command create database, and I'll just call it test. And then we could do something like show databases just to confirm it was created. Right, we could see there's our test database as well as some default databases that came with our system and so on and so forth. You can continue with whatever uh, database administrative tasks you might need to do at this point. Uh, but that's really beyond the scope of this video. This video was just about getting MariaDB installed and being able to connect to it. And in terms of next steps, I do have a couple other guides that might be of interest. I have one that talks more about working in the MySQL command prompt, creating databases, users, tables, um, how to get an application to connect to the database. Um, I also have one specific to the web framework Laravel, talks about setting up your database there and connecting to it. So I will include links to both of those guides in the description. But beyond that, as always, if you ran into any problems with the steps outlined in this video, feel free to leave a comment below and I can help you troubleshoot.